What's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to a special edition of Movie Emporium. Um, I, as you most of the time would see me, is in a video form, but unfortunately, with the way things work, um, this is going to be through an audio format. So uh, I hope you enjoy, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to reach me out on, uh, you know, subscribing below or hitting the no notification button or comment below, all that good stuff. Um, the reason I'm doing this today is I like interviewing people. I like talking to people about, you know, the behind the scenes stuff, you know, whether it be reviewing or the above or below the line type of material. And, um, I had met this gentleman who we're going to be interviewing today. Uh, I don't know. It was like a couple years ago or a year ago or something like that. Um, I can't remember his exact day, excuse me, the exact day, but it was, I think I, the last, the first thing I really remember talking to you about was your, uh, was it hold the dark, um, explanation video that you did? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And, um, I, cause I was curious because you had done all these videos and then you did this explanation video and it did like gangbusters view wise. And I'm like, holy crap. Like, you know, what is your secret? But you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that in just a second. But before we actually continue, um, I ha with me today, I have uh, a gentleman who has also done really well in the uh, YouTube sphere. He does, you know, a lot of reviews, a lot of explanation videos, and he has gained a, quite an audience. And uh, I figured it'd be fun to talk to him and kind of, you know, get a view and opinion about how he goes about his, you know, business with reviewing and so on and so forth. But with me today is a gentleman named Chris who uh, handles movie and munchies. How are you doing, Chris? Hey, Nick. Good. Thanks for having me. Good. Excellent. Um, so, like I said, like I was telling you before we recorded, uh, this is going to be kind of informal. So, just kind of starting out, tell me about what made you want to, like, how did you become into being passionate about film and so on and so forth? Well, I've, I've. I have a huge media background and just absolutely love watching TV and movies. I mean, I'm a couch potato at heart. And so, <laughs> um, you know, we, me and my family, we always just, we watch movies. I've always had a huge collection and we right. watch them, we discuss them, we go to movies all the time. I mean, we probably, before I even started this YouTube thing, we were doing a lot, we did more media than the average family did. Right. That's just something that we were into. You know, other people do sports or whatever, and we did mm. we did TV and movies. And I, I've had always this little dream of mine to be like a snack food taste testing movie reviewer, and okay. which is you know it's sloth. That's all that really is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. I, and then a buddy of mine, um, he started a YouTube channel about a month before me, and he was telling me about it, and I was like, dude, you know what? I just need to hop on that. I just need to do it. It doesn't matter if anybody watches. I'm just going to try it, see what I can do. And um, I already had a camera and I got a couple of cheapy lights and I was uh, using a microphone that I had out of one of my cases, which was terrible. But, <laughs> you know, it just yeah. I just started doing it and started playing around and um, just having a blast doing it. I think really that's the biggest thing is that I'm it's nothing out of the ordinary for me other than a little bit of time. And so now I just... I, I watch movies and then I, I take the time to actually write something down and then put my ugly mug in front of a camera <laughs> and record something and then see if anybody comments or watches, you know, it's always a crap right. seat if they're going to, if I'm going to have, you know, three views or 3000 views. Yeah. It, it's, it's crazy to me because, you know, I, I don't have like the biggest channel in the world, but some of my videos will get like, you know, 500 views or like, a, like I was telling you the Picard trailer got like 2000 views and it's just, it's crazy because you never know what's going to hit. Because you told me about, you know, Comic-Con, how those trailers hit. I'm like, okay, I'll try this out. And the Picard trailer is like 2,000 views. So yeah, I got like copyright strike or whatever. But it was like, it, it, you just never know. But, um, I mean, yeah, YouTube's, that, yeah. yeah um, that's exactly it. When I was doing um, Comic-Con 18, I mean, I didn't know. I just, uh -huh. I saw other people posting trailer reactions and I thought, yeah, I'll try it. I don't know. And, <laughs> you know, a couple of them got like, like, I think double digit views. And then this one on Godzilla just went nuts. And I'm like, what right. the crap? You know what I'm, and that's the first time any of my, um, any of my videos, I think had the first gotten over a hundred views. And then when it got over a thousand, I was just giddy because I was like, oh, this is, this is insane. A thousand people actually <laughs> took the time to watch this. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's like, 
when you, when you go about making a, a review, you go to see a movie. You're like me. We a lot of times we're able to get screening passes to go see a movie. It's very difficult a lot of times because you have to get there early. Like me or you, you know, you have your family, but you have to get there like three or four hours in advance. There's like a ton of people that jump in line afterwards, and then you have to go home, possibly not sleep a lot because you like me. We don't. We have works and jobs, jobs like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we like I'll sleep like four hours one time, but. uh you know, when you see the movie, do you talk to your family about it? Do you like it would say it's like a, a bigger movie. Do you talk to them first and then they kind of help you form your opinion or do you just kind of stay silent or um, we I mean, we decompress as we talk about it, um, but we don't always see eye to eye on them. And so I think that right. some of that it helps. Um, I think also part of it as I'm as I'm recording occasionally because yeah, I flub up all the time. I mean, if you could see my, <laughs> yeah. my outtakes, that'd be amazing. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll say wrong things or I'll forget something or I'll, you know, something like that. And that's the one good thing is that from another room, uh, mm-hmm. one of my family members will be like, hey, no, 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 it's this. Or, hey, don't forget to tell that. Or they're really good also about telling me if I've ventured into spoiler territory when I didn't mean mm-hmm. to. Right. You know, and that's like, they're like, oh, should you have said that? Oh, I don't know. And then I can, you know, I can think about it. But as far as... Um, I mean, I pretty much have I have an opinion right when I come out of it or as I'm right. watching the film. Um, sometimes they confirm it, you know, and and sometimes we we completely disagree. Or... Yeah, it's I don't know. Like that's the bad thing about being living by myself and doing this on my own is I don't have people that go with me because a lot of, a lot of the people I know don't like to go to the movies like you know you and I do or your <laughs> family does, and it becomes really difficult. But um, when you go to a screening and you listen to people around you, do you kind of laugh? Because, you know, for instance, like Midsummer, you know, when you see stuff like that, you know, it's a movie that's not necessarily going to be popular among a lot of people. Do you ever just sit there and laugh and then kind of like go, I could use this for material in my reviews or anything like that? Uh, not so much for the reviews. I, well, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I guess sometimes it does creep in there a little bit, but it it shocks me, I think more than anything when I go and some of the times, you know, I'll see a movie and I'll know that it's going to do wonderfully at the box office. That doesn't mean it's a good movie. You know, it's got terrible writing or it's just, I don't know, whatever that is, fill in, fill in the reason why it's not an actual good movie, even though it Mm -hmm. can make a lot of money. And, um, but then I also hear, you know, people, we were watching, um, gosh, what was it? A Bohemian Rhapsody. And there right. were a couple scenes where people were, and they were older than me. I mean, I'm mid forties. They were, they were older than me and they were shocked by some of the things. And it's like, what, did you not know who Freddie Mercury was? <laughs> did you not know who Queen was at all? It's just, you yeah. know, it kind of, it catches me off guard a little bit. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's, I do enjoy though, when people, when I can tell that somebody's not getting a movie, you right. know, because it's like, wow, you, you totally missed it. Or, oh, you, you came in thinking one thing and, oh, that was, oh, you must be really either shocked or disappointed or horrified, whatever that is, because, you know, it's just, it didn't match what they were expecting in any shape or form. Right, right. Yeah, I, uh, I think the most recent one, and you, you know much as I do when it comes to like Midsummer. Um, I remember going to see that movie and, even though that movie's not for me, I respect him, what he's doing and what he's saying. But the people around me, they're like, they're like what the heck is going on? Why is this <laughs> happening? It's like, I, I love going to those types of movies because you just get, like, weird ideas and opinions. You know, I, I always say, like, one of my favorite moments going to a movie is when Gothica came out. And you're sitting there and you're watching. And there's a scene where she's in the padded room. She's being beat up by the ghost. And then she she looks around. She can't see the ghost. She bends down, comes back up, bends down. The ghost is behind her. And it gets, like, the most insane crowd reaction I've ever seen where it made me jump. <laughs> and, yeah, it's just crazy. But, um, like, what what is your favorite thing about reviewing movies? What's the thing that most excites you? Because you like, you know, getting your opinion out there. But is there something that, like, do you get the thrill of people reacting to your reviews? Do you... Just enjoy giving the chance to see the movies in general. I mean, what's what's your favorite part about it? That's a good question. Um, huh. I mean, I would I would go see the movies probably anyways. I'm not sure I would see as many of them yeah. um, <laughs> as I do <laughs> if I weren't doing this. Um, I think a lot of the time it's interacting with people in comments. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, sometimes we all get the trolls. Um, and sometimes <laughs> they make me laugh even harder because it's just like, wow, okay. Um, right, right. But, but I think when I can have a really good discussion with somebody about, mm. about what we saw or what we think we saw or what we understood, especially, you know, if I, I don't know everything. And so if I, if I miss something or if I have a wrong theory and somebody else brings a different one, it's like, oh, cool, that, that's my opportunity to learn and get a right. better understanding of of the film itself and what they're what they're saying, what the filmmaker was trying to push forward in the story, and so I think that's probably the the best or the most exciting thing that I like is that, you know, when you get a large group of people who are interacting back and forth mm-hmm. and they're all sharing their theories, then I I don't know I think that that's elevating what what movies are versus just mindless entertainment, but now has the opportunity to educate us or to at least get us critically thinking. Yeah, because do you ever go like go into movies now compared to when before you even did this where you like you see movies like in a different light? Because I go into like, I don't know, I, I went into Godzilla or I went into um, uh, when I first did the review, I did a Mission Impossible Fallout. And it's just like your your ideas and ideologies change, not necessarily how you view the movie, but how you have to like express it because you go in there and you're like, how do I do this? I mean, do you go in there with notes when you when you also do you, you know some people come up with the notepads and stuff like that? But do you do you does your does your view of thinking change when you watch a movie now compared to uh, used to? Maybe a tiny bit. I mean, I try and um, I think I I'm I'm more actively thinking during the movie of things that I want to remember or points that I want to do. I don't bring a notepad or anything because I. I can't see in the dark anyway. And, and, I, <laughs> right. and I also don't want to miss anything that's going on. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, I think, yeah, I mean, I, in a long about way. Uh, yeah, I do think about it a little differently. Not not mm-hmm. totally. I mean, we've always, uh, my wife and I, even before we had kids, would always just analyze and discuss movies. So that's not necessarily a new thing. But mm-hmm. me paying attention to certain things or trying to remember certain aspects of that. And, and more so like, almost kind of writing a script in my head a little yeah. bit sometimes as the movie goes, you know, just like, Oh, I want to, I need to make sure I say this or I want to remember it. I say this half the time I forget anyway, but <laughs> <laughs> it is going through my head at least. At yeah. That time. Um, yeah. Cause I noticed like my main problem and you probably have the same problem too, where you'll be recording something and then you're finished recording. You're like, Oh crap. I forgot to mention that. Cause I have a habit of just writing the actors' names down because they're like, for instance, I did the review for the boys, the Amazon series. I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. Yeah, I'm actually uh, tonight going to record my review of it. <laughs> oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. And there, but when you get into like TV series, there's like a thousand names you have to remember. It's like I'm not going there, so I just remember I put down the names and, um. But it, yeah, it's when re- when reviewing like. Do you ever ever go back and re-record stuff because you just forgot something, or you just kind of let do you like? For instance, I sometimes have to go back and re-record it because i just don't feel comfortable with what i've been editing that type of thing um there's been a couple of times where i've done that for the most like sometimes depending on what it was Mm -hmm. um if it wasn't if it wasn't a movie so much as maybe like a netflix thing or a series that i had watched a little while ago it's not the brand newest thing Mm -hmm. um sometimes i'll just not post it if i'm just i'm just done with that you know like i've watched it I've, I've like, oh, really? I screwed that up completely, or I totally <laughs> forgot to say that. There's been times where, no joke, I mean, because I do a couch rating system, yeah. you know, instead of stars or whatever, and there is there has been times where I forget to put in the ca- <laughs> the rating, <laughs> and it's like, oh, well, that's moron. Okay, whatever. You know, you just you just go on. But like yeah. uh, the other night, no joke, I recorded. Um, oh, it was for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Okay, I recorded my review of that. And I had been messing with my microphone on my camera and I unplugged it and didn't plug it all the way back in. <laughs> so I had no audio the uh-huh. first time I did it. So oh, I luckily, man. luckily I saw it before I tore everything down mm-hmm. and then I sat back down and did it again. And in parts, I think the review was better because I'd already done it once. Right. But in other parts, you know, it was worse because I forgot things because I had already <laughs> said them and they were out of my head. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I've done that before where I used to have a lapel mic and I would be recording, right? And then I would get done and I would put it onto my computer that I edit off of. And all of a sudden I'm like, where's the sound at? <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is going on? It would go on for you. And then I just like, I'm, screw this. I'm just going to buy a roadie mic. So I bought one of the roadie mic goes or whatever, you know, it's you a go. you know, $100 mic or whatever. And it just, it works now, but it's like, yep. 
Oh, such a disaster. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I feel your pain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but how, what? Okay, so you do the couch rating system, like you were saying. What what possessed you to do? Like, for instance, you do, you know, it's called Movies and Munchies, so it makes sense on a couch. But do you feel that the rating system still a positive thing? Do you, th- do you think it gets you more ratings? Do you think people like that? Or do you think, you know, for instance, I don't do a rating system because it's just kind of how I do things. But do you do you enjoy doing the rating system? Or how do you, how, what's your honest opinion? Because that's always what I've been wondering because a lot of people do it. Yeah, I mean, I watch, you know, some people do letter grades. Some people mm-hmm. do none. Some like, you know, or they do stars or whatever. I mean, it's completely arbitrary, you know, yeah, I, mean, um, I do opinion. try yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, totally. And I try and do um, like on all of my in my descriptions, I at least list what the rating stands for, you know. So if right. it's five, it's like, oh, my gosh, don't miss this type of thing. And for me, I'll keep doing the ratings, even though I've kicked around not doing them, because quite honestly, sometimes I, I'm not sure when I li- at least look at the at the the watch time. Mm-hmm. Not everybody makes it to the very end of the movie yeah. or the, excuse me, the end of my review. So I'm not sure if they're really, they really care about that too much. I do have some people that comment on it or whatever, right? but for the most part, it's more of me just saying, you know what, because I'm a regular guy like you, you know, I'm not, it, it's my time to go, to go to <laughs> these things and do it. So, um, I want to know, and I'm trying to educate other people. Do I think it's worth going to see Mm-hmm. in in the theater or just on Redbox. And I say that anyway a lot of the times. But um, I think it helps me a little bit just to be like, ah, well, you know what? No, this one, it knocked it out of the park. It was so amazing. I would buy it. I will watch it again. I will watch it all the time. Or, oh, I need to cut out my <laughs> eyeballs because that was just so <laughs> terrible and a waste of time. Just run away from it. Right, right. Yeah, it's um, it's such a tricky thing because the one thing that people don't understand is – and you, you get this, and everybody gets this. You're stating your opinion on something. You're not stating their opinion, and they get so offended by it. And that's why I'm always curious about the rating system because I know a lot of people do it, and I, you know, I have no problems with that. It just when they see that rating system, it's like, oh my god, you know, IGN gave them a gave it a six point five, so that means that movie is going to be the greatest thing or whatever, and they get so upset by it. But I was always curious about people's ideas about if the, they think the rating system is good or not. So I was just curious of what you thought about that. I know, like you said, it's arbitrary, but a lot of, a lot of people like really like that system because they feel like it gives a, a a sticking moment or whatever you want to call it. So Yeah, yeah, and I think, I mean, you know, I think we're also in a, a little bit of an interesting time where mm-hmm. – uh, Rotten Tomatoes used to be the one thing that everybody would look to yeah. as, ooh, that that's really the the scale of should we go see it? Is it good or not? And there's so much backlash now. Even you take out just the fans that were, you know, rating things before they saw them. Um, it's I'm not I'm not sure it's still even a I don't know. I guess it gives you a snapshot of what the collective critics view yeah. it as. But I grew up. I would read the newspaper. And I would read the the mu- movie reviewing dude, and no joke, if he gave it a terrible review, I went out and saw it immediately. <laughs> nice. Because we we were polar opposites in every ideology, yeah. and so it, it just you know it helped me to be like, yeah, well, okay, I don't agree with you at all, but if you hated it, I might like it. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot with my friends. Um, there there was a point where it, it was a running joke where if I liked something they would ha- they would hate it and if they hated it they would like it so <laughs> yeah um, yeah like I said I don't follow I follow certain people like for instance I follow you and I follow um, Rye the movie guy and I follow you know Chris Stuckman because I really think he does a nice job with his reviews mm-hmm. um, but like I said I don't really follow Rotten Tomatoes very much because I feel like it just brings a lot of disdain not not mm-hmm. what they're doing but People swear on that like it's the you know the thing that they have to re, you know base their movies. And it's like no, people just put their stuff in a pile and it gives you an average. And yeah, growing up, did you have like m- movies that you really enjoyed that kind of made you want to not not necessarily review movies, but made you real passionate? Was there any movies in general that you really enjoyed that maybe I don't know kind of shaped the way you, way you think. I'm trying to think of a good way to oh, say that, but yeah, well, there's a lot of movies, but was there any like specifics that you like really remember? For instance, like me, it was like Ghostbusters and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I had, there was, 
yeah, I like, I mean, Ghostbusters is what I remember seeing that in the theater. I loved it, you know, but right. it was, um, there was nothing highbrow about a lot of the movies that really shaped my, my tastes at the beginning. And I think I like, I'm not ashamed of that at all. Yeah. I mean, there was, you know, young Frankenstein, mm. strange brew, Ferris Bueller, better yeah. off dead, one crazy summer, uh, you know, Goonies, princess bride, stuff like that, that were, they were just fun. Right. You know, right. And that was, um, you know, I go back now and I still totally watch them and I can I can pull other gems from them. But at that point, it was just like, ha, ah, these made me laugh that I was, you know, thoroughly entertained. Uh, but then there was also ones like, uh, what, gosh, the Untouchables or Hunt for Red October. Right. Which they I was just drawn in. I was sucked into them and they they weren't mindless and stupid, but it was just, you know, so, yeah, I. I think there was a large part of that early eighties or early to mid eighties, um, mm. terrible movies right. that you would look at, you know, and you'd be like, Oh my gosh, how those are just guilty pleasure movies. No, I absolutely love them. I, and I'm not ashamed to say it at all. No, I mean, do you ever, um, do you ever think about going back and doing like, you know, for instance, I do a flashback thing. Do you ever think about, are you so focused like on doing the new reviews now? Or do you ever think about going back to, yeah, I did. I did one, mm. one time and at some point, I probably will. Um, I did What's Up, Doc, which is a 1974 uh, Peter Bogdanovich yep. uh, film with, uh, gosh, what is it? Ryan O'Neill and um, Barbara Streisand. Yeah, and that's right. Yep, yep. It's just a genius of a movie, you know? And I, so, yeah, I think at some point I may go back and start doing that a little bit just because I would want other people who don't necessarily know about all of these films mm to go see them. I mean, everybody knows about, well, I, I say everybody, <laughs> but I've run into people who have never seen Ferris Bueller. So yeah, or heard of it. Away. Yeah, exactly. Or even like breakfast club or something. And they're like, wait, what is that? You know, or I, Oh, I know the song from pitch perfect. Oh gosh, you're <laughs> killing me there. You, you just stop, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I think, I think I may at some point, you know, start dabbling in that just a little bit. Um, the, you know, the, the, the issue for me, just like you, is time. Right, right. Because there's only so much, especially outside of our full time gigs. Yeah. So it's like, well, what do I focus on? Do I do I go to that one, or do I do do something that's newer that people are binging right now on mm. Netflix? And so I haven't found that balance yet. But yeah, no, it's the thing that I find funny about reviews in general, and you probably agree with me is. Especially on like TV shows, you almost have to do the TV show that day unless you have a lot of viewers. I know it's it's a little easier. Like for instance, you get still get a lot of people to watch your videos even after you know the day. Let's say you do it to like three days later, whatever. Like I did with the boys, it'd probably be easier for you. But I always found that like you know trailer reacts or you know these TV series are harder to get views the farther away it gets and it's because everyone has done them already and it comes into the problem of we're working so we can't watch it all at once it's like the boys there was no way i was gonna be able to watch the boys you know uh, thursday night friday morning when it released it's just impossible but you know it leads into like you you have now have a bigger audience do you find it easier to like you know stretch out be it the watching time frame do you find it a little bit easier now or do you still find it about as difficult as it was no, I think there's still the pressure there because, um, you know, I still consider myself a smaller channel, especially when I look at, you know, like Chris Stuckman or Jeremy yeah. Johns or, I mean, even um, some other guys who, who have, I mean, maybe only they're less than 10,000, but mm-hmm. they're still closer to 10,000 than not. Right. Um, that, I mean, they're, um, <clears throat> what am I trying to say? Well, they... I do think there is a timeliness to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I like that Netflix, Hulu to some degree, even Amazon, um, they have more of a long tail to them because people aren't always watching every single thing on Netflix right when it comes out. Right. You know, I mean, even with the boys, um, Amazon was pushing it hard and heavy with, um, I mean, they were pushing it through Comic-Con. They're Mm -hmm. pushing it. If you log into Amazon, I mean, <laughs> boom, it's there. So it's, right. it's, it's hard to ignore that. But that still doesn't mean that everybody is going to sit down and binge all eight episodes because it's eight hours. Yeah. You know, I mean, you and I, we have a little bit of a different cadence right. to, to watching things. Um, so sometimes I feel a pressure mm-hmm. that if I want to review it, and especially if it's a series, 
And I think that it's going to um, be something that people are going to want to find out or, you know, what it's about or how a review would go. Um, then there is that pressure to kind of, you know what, I need to binge this right now or I need to watch as much of this as I can. I on this over this weekend, I think I recorded like eight or nine reviews that I still have to go through and edit. Oh, wow. okay. And yeah, yeah. And most of them, actually all of them mm -hmm. have been on um, Netflix or Hulu or HBO or whatever for for a while right and so i'm not i'm not i don't think that i'm going to get large numbers of views on that especially right off the bat yeah but i do believe that over over time at least i'm educating people so that they know you know and if they didn't know about a series um then well hey at least i'm bringing awareness to that especially if it's something that i think is really interesting um, or worthwhile to watch. Yeah, I um, I've been trying to cut back on trailer review reacts and stuff like that. But the ones I like to do are the ones of movies that either I've never heard of or a lot of people never heard of. Like for instance, uh, Judy and um, uh, Harriet, which is the Harriet Tubman movie and stuff like that. Mm. I like talking about those movies. There's a lot of people that tell me I should start doing like um, East Asian movies or Indian movies and stuff like that because you get a lot of views. I'm like. It's hard to do those types of movies because I feel like an outsider when watching, but I always thought about doing it. But do you ever think about going to that the realm? I know you probably do some, maybe some overseas movies like Europe or Asia or something like that. But how do you feel about that kind of stuff? Like uh, for for series, especially on Netflix and even movies, I love foreign films. So no, when I say foreign, I mean non English. Yeah, right. I think. Uh, I actually loathe American TV for the most part. I don't think it's written well. I don't think it's intelligent. Um, and I think it's fairly predictable. And so I really, I gravitate me personally towards um, a lot of the non-English shows and even the non-English movies. Mm. And so it allows me to branch out more. Like I just watched a, um, a Hindi series okay. called Layla a couple of weeks ago. And while it wasn't, spectacular it was entertaining and it it held my attention and it was fun to watch and it exposed me to a brand new culture that i wasn't um wasn't really familiar with at all right and then the best part is a lot of the people that knew about that or that watched the review they were able to refer or recommend other hindi series to me mm -hmm. So now I have, you know, now I have a lot more that I should, oh, I should go check out this one or I should see this one because a lot of people are like, no, if you're going to watch any of them, watch this one. Oh, cool. Okay. I didn't know. Right. You know, and so now I can, it just broaden my, broadens my horizon. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, I, yeah. Once again, it's all the time. <laughs> time. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm still debating, you know, there's like three movies this week. There was a, what was it? Three. Well, there was, of course, Hobbs and Shaw, which I, and there was a screen for that. But there's that uh, official secret that's on Tuesday. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. trying to balance that, trying to watch TV. It's like I see I see a lot of the videos you post and you say you did eight or nine videos. I'm like, man, that's like that's impressive. And, you know, with as much time as you have and working, do you um, do you find yourself like when you're recording those that you feel like it's the best to do it in batches? Or do you feel like you just do it however the wind flows or the river runs or whatever you want to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had been like these ones that I did over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, they had been, I had written out my reviews just over the course of, I think the last two weeks. And I just literally did not have time yeah. to record them because other movies came up mm -hmm. or just life or whatever. And so I had, well, it was stupid hot here in California on Saturday <laughs> yeah. and there was no way in the world I was going outside. So I was able to sit in the house um, it took about, I think it took about two hours to go through them all and just to, you know, record. Now, how did they turn out? I don't know yet because I haven't edited them. Some of them may be absolute garbage. Right. I just, I, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I think for the most part, I'll do, you know, I'll, I'll watch a movie, come home, write it out or just so that it's not word for word, but it is a lot of my thoughts so that I, I don't miss things. And I think that's a lot of it that I, that I always tend to forget that I wanted to say something. And even when I write it out, I still forget to say something because I forgot to write it down. Yeah. But this allows me to at least kind of put my thoughts in, in some sort of order just to make sure that I, I am at least hitting some of the big points. Um, and then when I watch it the next day or as I'm editing, I'm like, Oh, Hey, I should have <laughs> said this. I wish I would have said this, whatever. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Go, moving on, you know? Um, but yeah, I'll do. So when I come home from a movie, I'll, I'll write it up, record it, sit down and edit and then post it, you know, and, and like you, I mean, it's one in the morning when I'm going to sleep <laughs> right. and then I'm, I'm getting up to go to work at six the next morning. Right. So it's, 
it gets it, sometimes there's long weeks. I mean, we've seen four movies in one week one time, and that was um, that was a lot, uh, especially like for my family. Mm. Like you know, they they just kind of go along for the ride. And yeah, I, um, I think the I think I, the worst I had it was um, I was the it was I thank God they had early screens for it. But if the last year was Spider Man and um, uh, Aquaman and oh, well, there was like two other movies that came out. If they hadn't had early screens for that, I would have I would have fallen on the ground dead because you know Vice was coming out and it was like, uh, do you ever do you ever just get to a point where you just kind of there's so much so many movies coming out at once you just like I have to pick and choose or do you try and do as many as you can because I know it's hard so yeah I I do try and do as many as I can. But um, there have been times, especially if it's a movie where I know that it's a genre or a, a content that I am not going to enjoy, right. that I will just be like, oh, you know what? I, I'm OK if we skip this, even if I think that it's going to be gangbusters on views mm-hmm. and gangbusters, you know, is a couple hundred views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I just I don't I'll still forego that. And sometimes it depends on, you know, how long of a week is it? How what? What have we got going on? And sometimes, you know, that's on a, like a Monday or a Tuesday. It's like, oh, well, I'm just going to skip this review. I know I'm, I don't have any other movies to do this week, right. but the, my life is nuts this <laughs> week. And we need a night at home, and that's for our own sanity. So it's like, okay, cool. I just, you know, I'm moving on. And there's always, you know, if I really need to post something... There's always crap on Netflix or Hulu or Amazon that yep, I can yep. go through. Yeah, I um, every Friday I'm like, oh, there's probably gonna be something on Netflix or Amazon. Or I was actually not even gonna do the boys, and I'm like, you know what? I like the series a lot, and people are probably curious if it's any good because I don't know if you watch you watch the trailers before you watch the series, but it was insane like i i didn't like when i went to the series i was not expecting it to be a way it was but you know there are some times where like for instance you know Hobbs and shaw's on i don't know wednesday or something like that and i'm like yeah i, I don't know maybe i'll wait till thursday and use my <laughs> amc a list which i never seem to use because i get all the screen passes you know think you know thankfully from a friend but you know, here's another question I have. When AMC A list came out, I was asking about that. And you said there's no AMCs around you, and of course today they announced the Regal Unlimited. What's your, what's your feeling on this whole Unlimited or this whole pass system? Do you feel it's worth it to you? Do you I mean do you would you still do you you see a lot more movies because of it, or do you just get enough screening passes where it just doesn't seem worth it for you? Because it, sometimes it just doesn't seem worth it for me. Yeah, I mean, well, I had Movie Pass when it first came out when they when they had the the True Unlimited for what was it ten bucks yeah. a month or something like that before they had all of their issues. <laughs> and the first month, uh, my wife and I, I want to say we saw twenty movies. Holy cow! Something like that. Yeah, yeah. So now, you know, I, people are like, "Well, the movies aren't getting the or the movie theaters aren't getting paid." Well, no, they actually are. They're getting paid. It, that's why Movie Pass went out of business. Um, but more so, it's me paying. I mean, I'm paying concessions most of the time that yeah. I go. Also, so I'm giving even more money there. Right. I I think yeah because of the Regal thing. I mean, I'm seriously considering it mm. because it um it would allow me to especially on like that those Thursday nights yeah or even Friday or Saturday if I didn't get a screening right now it's it's coming out of my paycheck anyway. Right, right. And so if I can save myself a little bit of money to go, then I'm all for that. Um, and because it's um, because it's regal, mm-hmm. they're figuring out on their own ways how their theaters get paid. So I'm not worried about that the theater's not getting paid um, for me coming in and seeing a movie 13 times yeah. or, you know, 13 <laughs> movies in, in a month. Right. Uh, and I'm still always buying concessions too. I mean, which is just making me round. That's all that has to it. But um, yeah, I, I think, you know what? I think it would also allow me mm-hmm. to not feel as pressured sometimes to see as many screenings. Right. Yeah, because you agree with me, especially I, up in Orlando when I was living up there before I moved to Miami. A lot of the places like you were outside, so you'd be out in the hundred degree plus weather, ninety degree plus weather. You be drinking like six gallons of water, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it, it makes a mess. And this way, you know, for instance, Lion King did no screenings, so therefore you could go and, like I said, I use A-List. Um, the thing that's nice about these programs, the things that I like about it, there are movies that I would never go see, some good, some bad. For instance, Last Black Man in San Francisco, 
I would have never seen that movie in the theater if it weren't for the Cinemark program or the AMC A list or Regal. Because what it's doing, because you're paying that twenty three bucks a month, seeing however many movies they offer, it gives you the opportunity to not have to always go see the big budget movies like the Avengers or Lion Kings. You can go see some something like small, like you know, Book Smart or um, um, I don't know what else. Like I said, uh, Last Black Man in San Francisco. I lost my train of thought. What I was gonna other movies, but <laughs> you know, it's it's nice, you know, because those movies. My personal opinion is the big budget movies are so pushed out there that these smaller movies don't get a lot of love. And when I'm doing something a review for like Stuber or you know, like I said, The Last Black Man in San Francisco, people want to know about those movies because they don't, you know, everybody can see the review for Lion King because there's like a thousand reviews for that. But you know, there's not many reviews for you know <laughs> Stuber or something like that. It's just those. That's the reason I enjoy that. So yeah, you hit the nail on the head that it really does allow you to. Um to experience new films that you probably wouldn't have done before mm. because you had to make a different choice with your spending dollar. Yeah. And you know, you, if you, if you have to go to pay to see a movie, then, you know, you're now choosing between, well, gosh, I really need to review Spider-Man, mm. but I really want to also see last black man in San Francisco. And I don't have money for both of these. So which do I do? Right. You know, now that that's taking care of that. I, I think that's a great thing because I really is more and more people, if they take advantage of the system, of the program, not take advantage like as in a work it, but if they really do what it's intended and go to the theater a lot, then they can see a whole bunch of different films that maybe they've never seen before or even thought about seeing before and they're exposed to something new. Yeah, it's um, it's incredible because like some of, some of the movies I'll see that I'll put my top 10 in the list this year are not the big budget movies like a lot of people would. People be like, why don't you put... Uh, I don't know, Avengers Endgame on there. I'm like, well, there was like 10 great films. For instance, last year I did a, I don't know how, why and how this movie blew up with my, my view count, but Puzzle. Puzzle came out last year mm. with, um, uh, I think it's Ifra Khan or something like that. But it was a small movie and then everybody's like, oh, I've never heard of this movie before. You know, this is a great movie, has great cast. And it's like, these are the kind of movies I love to talk about. You know, people don't go see the movie like The Writer or something like that. And it's just, I enjoy being able to talk about those films because those are the films you know, people don't hear about. So that's, yeah, absolutely. But, um, so you're, I want to talk about your set a little bit, you know, the thing you have behind you, How, what was your idea about, cause I noticed like in your tra in your reviews, you change up your pop figures, your Funko pops. And, yeah. but like, what was, did you always want to have like a, was that just something for sound purposes or did you always have that bookcase or no? Well, the, we did this bookcase and my, uh, my wife wanted to, um, for color, uh -huh alphabetize our books or not alphabetize our books but organize our books right. by color which it looks amazing um and it, it's it's great as a backdrop yeah. uh when i first started doing them though i was literally sitting on my couch in my family room and it was an uninteresting background it was it was hard to to light everything and i had to literally tear down my lights and my camera every single time yeah. so now i shoot in our den which um has just an overflowing amount of pops all over the place right. and um because i don't put keep mine in boxes because i'm not i'm not reselling them they're just for me and i enjoy them yeah. um so there's no collectible you know keepsake like that um but it's also our video game room for the boys to to come in um my sons our sons to play video games in and stuff and just hang out and so i can leave my lights up kind of kind of out of the way a little bit as well as my camera in this room but the the bookcase, I don't know, it's a little bit of visual interest. It allows me to, you know, to put my pops on there uh. Um, for the most part. I did, we were messing around with our den um, at the end of last year and into the beginning of this year. And so I swapped it around a little bit and I was shooting in a different direction. And while I liked it from a lighting standpoint yeah. and it allowed me to, to have a little bit more depth to, to my thing, it wasn't as visually appealing. Mm -hmm. So I just went back to doing this. And at some point when kids are old enough and they move out, I'm probably going to take over one of their bedrooms, transform it into, you know, a studio and really and play with it a little bit more. But it's, I think more so, I lucked out mm -hmm. that my wife did something really awesome with our book. Yeah, it's a really and nice aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and it's only a tiny portion of our books that we have. I mean, we're it's like we, we robbed <laughs> Borders and Barnes and & Noble and the library, and then it all threw up all over our house. But... <laughs> You know, that's that's who we are. We have books. <laughs> yeah, no, it's perfectly fine. I um, the one thing I have is I have like movie posters and stuff like that around my room. Do you uh, do you do anything with like uh, soundproofing in that room, or do you just kind of just is enough? 
because it sounds really no. good when you record. So I just you know a lot of times like you'll have sound like soundproofing or something. Oh yeah, no, it's um part of it's the microphone. Uh-huh. I invested in a mic, and then I have. I mean, we have hardwood floors. And, oh, okay. But there's not even a door to the den. Um, I ripped that out and took that off when I remodeled it. Um, but I have, I mean, I have a couch in here, two chairs, and it's not a big room by any means. I think it's just, there's a lot of crap. Right. And so it allows it to, um, and it's not a square room Mm -hmm. either. So the, the sound doesn't bounce just, you know, like it would in a regular room. So I think it has some natural baffling in it. And then I put a rug on the, on the floor that is just there not for any other purpose, but to have a rug on the floor. So yeah, nothing nothing done on purpose other than the microphone itself, right. and that that made uh, a large difference. Now, for anybody who's listening, what kind of mic do you use? Uh, normally, I use a Rode. Oh well, on my camera for my reviews, uh-huh. I'm doing a headphone yeah, yeah, right yeah. now. But I do a um, a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. Okay, is that the one that has the uh, twenty decibel switch on it? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I had um I did a freelance gig for for somebody, and I got some. I just had you know I had unexpected money that I didn't budget for, and so it was extra, and I was like, ah, okay, I'm done with my plugging in my my janky, you know, handheld mic into the into the camera input, and it's all hissy and <laughs> nasty, and I was like, I'm done with this, yeah. and it saved me so much time, and that was, I think, a, a large part of at least the bonus part of it. Once I bought it, it was like, oh, now I no longer have to process my audio. <laughs> Is it perfect? No, it's yeah, not, yeah. but it, it does what it needs to do, and it sounds so much better. So yeah, yeah. that's the one thing going from a lapel to um, the road. The road mics are amazing mics. Even the one I have is amazing. The only problem, I, do you run your mic through your computer or through your camera? I run it through the camera. Okay. I, I don't know, because I have a Nikon D33 camera, and I don't know if it's like a bad connection, but I get a lot of buzzing noise, right? So mm. I don't know what the problem is there, but I have to run it through Audition, which I used to just run it through the normal Premiere Pro, and it would, um, it would like, when you cut it, it would, like, phase out, like, start muffling when you would. So, oh, yeah, it was weird. really, if you watch any of my older episodes, reviews, just listen to my audio, how bad it is, but... I started using Audition and it completely cut out the problem. But yeah, I understand the thing where you get rid of that buzzing noise. It makes it for a much easier process. And, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I don't like what you're okay. So I know a lot of people who use Sony Vega. Do you feel mm-hmm. Premiere Pro gives you enough stuff to really feel like it's worth, worth the price? Because it's really expensive. I mean, for what it is, but I find it really useful because there's stuff on there. Like, I still don't know After Effects that well. I'm still working on trying to figure out After Effects, but like using Premiere Pro, using Audition, use Photoshop, stuff like that. I find it nice, but I don't like, do you feel it's worth the price? Uh, I think for a convenience, yes, Mm -hmm. because I learned on the Adobe Suite um, when it was like CS, no, before it was CS, um, before it was Creative Suite. I mean, I was like Dreamweaver, Imax, oh, and all that wow. stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, so way back yeah, in the yeah. day. And so I, I've i just, that's that's what I've edited on. Mm-hmm. You know, when it was, even before it was Audition, when it was Cool Edit. I mean, or, you know, those types of things. But it um, it's a workflow yeah. thing for me. And right now, I mean, I do, I still will do some stuff that is more creative. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, my, my reviews are cut and dry. It's, I, I shoot it, I don't even color correct. Right. I just I toss it in there, I cut it up, <laughs> and I, I output it, and I'm good to go. I use I do use After Effects sometimes, like I built my intro in After Effects. Yeah. Every once in a while, I will do something with that. I'm much more comfortable doing color correction or graphics or anything in After Effects mm-hmm. than I am in Premiere. Even though I know Premiere can do a lot of that stuff, it it's because of how I learned how to do it. Yeah. And you know, but I have friends who have never used After Effects. So they do everything in Premiere. So for me, I mean, yeah, it's a workflow thing. It's a while it is expensive, mm. it's it, it's just it, I, I knew it was an investment that I needed to make for for everything that I would do, and then it allows me to do do stuff for friends, do stuff for church, all that stuff where I can I can you know if I need to make graphics or I need yeah. to make somebody a logo or I just I need to edit something really quick. I know that I can hop in there and do it really quickly. Um, I have been though on a, on a free note. <laughs> I've been intrigued by DaVinci. Right. Is that DaVinci Resolve? That's a free program, I guess. Okay. I, I've never used it, but it, it it certainly intrigues me to be like, oh, well, there's there's a, a good program out there that 
that people can use for free. And so, I don't know, maybe at some point I'll at least learn how to do it just so I can teach other people to use it. You said it's called DaVinci? Yeah, I believe it's called DaVinci Resolve. Okay. Huh. Yeah, I'm always looking for, you know, stuff like that because I'm always interested in learning new things. And like I said, I've never been the most computer literate person in the world. It took me, I can't tell you how long to figure out how to edit on Premiere Pro. It was just, it's just how I've always been. I've always kind of wanted things. I always go to like YouTube and try and figure out videos and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. You know, when you've done it for, you say you've done it for a while, you've used the programs and stuff like that, it's probably pretty simple and stuff like that. And it's still, I mean, it's still completely complex and there's a lot of working parts in it. But yeah, I mean, I I find it, you know, kind of expensive, but I find, like you said, it's very intuitive. You can do a lot of stuff. And my only issue is because my, I work off a laptop, so it's not the most powerful of PCs. For instance, when I was putting out my uh, my uh, Black Mirror stuff, it took like a long time to render and stuff like that. So that might be, but yeah. For instance, like you know, editing a video, it's put the drop the file down here, edit it, cut what you want, put in videos, good to go. Hopefully, they don't copyright claim it. So <laughs> yeah, um, I, I've actually talked to you about this before, and I kind of wanted to still get your opinion. Copyright claims are a major problem on YouTube. It's something that's very you, you just go, I'm, all I'm doing is giving you my opinion. Most of the time it's good. You know, I don't do any hateful or deceitful things. I'm not one of those people. But yet certain companies feel the need to block your video or copyright the content. And it makes it, it makes you feel constricted. It makes you feel like you're weighted down for something that all you, for instance, I'll go back to Picard again. All I was doing while I was watching the trailer reacting to it and giving my opinion i love the trailer i don't know what you thought of the trailer but the trailer was amazing and comes in and blocks it. i'm like one you're getting free publicity i understand the whole copyright thing but if i'm giving you free publicity i'm giving you an opinion on it i'm not doing anything deceitful what is the problem it's like everybody like youtube is so scared to like give the creator their own own thing i guess I, if that makes any sense but yeah it, it's it's a weird animal um and I, I honestly i don't understand it and that's that's why now i don't do um trailer yeah. reactions because when i was trying to to get my watch hours up and trying to get to a point where i was monetized on youtube i would do whatever it took to get views you know so i would run the run the trailer reactions, knowing that I was going to get a copyright yeah. claim on it and they could want it, you know, the studio could monetize it all they want. But now I find myself sometimes, um, I have to be really careful about how much imagery I put in and I don't understand the fair use thing. Um, I, I, I'm fairly yeah. intelligent. And when I read it, I thought, well, I should be able to put some still images in my thing that is just as a point of reference. That's all. That's all it is. I'm not using video. I'm just using some still images and there have been times where, yeah, that I, I get dinged and I'll appeal it and it's like, nope, it's it that they get that. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. But I don't understand all the nuances to it because it doesn't seem like it's consistent. You know, like some, like the one that I got dinged on the most recent, which was, I don't know, several months ago, I gave the movie a terrible review because it just wasn't a good movie. But, you know, and I, so I'm curious would I have gotten that had I not trashed the movie as much? You know, not given it. If I had given it a favorable review, would they have been like, "Oh no, no, it's totally fine"? I, obviously, I don't know right. that answer. But yeah, it's. It, I wish, I wish there was more of a clear cut. I understand that if I were using full clips with audio, that the the content creator could say, "Nope, you know what? We're we're gonna we're gonna monetize it for ourselves, yeah. not you. You you know." You, you don't get the money from showing this. Okay, fair enough. But as somebody who, you know, if, I, if I'm talking about it, I'm showing just some brief imagery on it, uh, just as, as points of reference, then, uh, you know, and I'm not claiming that it's my work. I'm telling you exactly who it is and who's, it, I obviously didn't right. make the movie. I'm just telling you about it. So I've, yeah, I don't know, maybe at some point it would be, it would be worth it for me to hop in or even, you know, call up a lawyer or something and just say, you know, I need I need to understand this more. I need to get a better understanding of how is it tr- is it truly that if I put anything in there? Because, I mean, theoretically, right now, if you look at YouTube's terms and conditions, by me putting a still one still for one second of something that is not mine, I'm in copyright. You know, I have I'm in copyright yeah. infringement. And well, it's, I don't understand how that works with fair it, use. It, 
I, I don't understand it either, and you're right. It's something you almost have to ask a lawyer for because I'm a, I'm not afraid of them claiming it because if they're going to claim it, they're going to claim it. Certain companies will do that, and that's fine. Just let me show my video to people. Like if you like, I'm not at a point in my YouTube status where I'm even gonna I'm even considered to make money, so that's fine. But for instance, when I get a video that makes a couple thousand views. People were really interested, even though they're downvoting. Uh, the whole downvote thing, I'm sure you agree with me, is just the most ridiculous thing ever. But um, yes. it just yes. some people were like, oh, it gives you, you know, opinions and whatnot. I'm like, no, no, it just gives people an easy way to downvote your stuff and get instead of giving you an opinion. But yeah, the fair view, the fair use thing is a really weird copyright. I tried to look into it. And I, the the whole the whole lingo and thing and trying to read the decipher is just not how I work. I, I go to my friend who is a, um, a lawyer. I can't remember what he does, but I asked him, you know, some information about it. And he's like, yeah, it's really complicated for no reason, you know, copyright and stuff like that. And I understand they want to protect their property. I get that. That's fine. But don't give people the ability to go see screenings or to review your movies, you know, if you're wanting, if it's like, it's like me getting hurt because someone used my, let's say I put a trailer, uh, like a fake trailer together and put it online and I get upset because someone reacted to that video, you know, you can't, you can't be hidden under behind a cloak, you know, your whole entire life because you feel like you're going to get hurt for some, what somebody says. If you did that, nobody would ever review anything. You know, it's just like, yeah, I don't <laughs> know. It's, it's just. It's really frustrating and really just kind of irks me. But, you know, like I said, there's not much. All I can do is dispute it, appeal it, and go from there. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple more things because I'm a, you know, I don't want to run too long. But when you, when did you start, because I know you say you're a small channel, but you still get a lot of views and stuff like that. I know you don't, you base it on what your opinion stuff like that is. But when did you start? realizing what video did you start realizing that people were honestly watching your product was or not i mean your channel was it was it that hold the dark video was it something else i mean like i said i keep going back to hold the dark because that you you got like a ton of views on that and i'm like i'm i'm actually wondering like <laughs> did you and your wife go holy crap what is going on here i mean like was that the video or was there something that like you realized that people were actually paying attention well i mean like when i did the um Last year's Comic Con, 2018 yeah. Comic Con. I mean, when I got you know a couple of thousand views on on Godzilla, that was like, oh wow, that's really yeah. weird. Um, cool. But no, when I did um, when I did the Hold the Dark Explained, uh, that one, no joke, that caught me off mm. guard. We were, I mean, it it it's I still get comments on it yeah. now. People are still you know they're finding it as they find it on Netflix and stuff. And it was it was one of those things where I watched watched the movie. It was like we watched it. We're like, holy crap, that was a terrible movie. I just wasted two hours of my life. Right. You know what's going on? And then we, uh, me and my wife, started going back and forth and and just dissecting it. And I was, you know, I, I said, oh well, I think this. And she's like, no, no, I don't think that. And so I just, you know, I hashed it out and I thought about it overnight. And I woke up the next morning. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do one of these. I don't know if anybody's going to yeah. see it. And it was like, I hope I never lose this feeling that I don't get jaded by what it feels like to see all of a sudden when I click refresh on the, on the dashboard of YouTube yeah. and it has, you know, 2000 <laughs> views. And then in 15 minutes it has close to 3000 yeah. and it's like, what's going on, you know? And so by the weekend, I think it was over 30,000 <laughs> views. Now that was, I, I was like, what? Mm. I, I mean, it's stupid. And I know that, you know, if you look at a lot of the big guys, mm. then the big people that have, you know, they, they get they get three hundred thousand yeah. views, in, you know, in twenty four hours. So it's yeah, whatever. But I, I, the feeling of that was just it was it was awe, and and a little weird, uh, certainly surreal. And it was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, that many people watched at least even a minute of what I had to yeah. say. That is just insane, you know. And it, it and it baffles me that you know some of them do some of them do really right. well. And some of them don't do well at all. And it's, uh, you know, so I, I don't even look at it and go, yep, I've nailed that formula. I know exactly what to do every single time. <laughs> no, no, it's purely just, hey, this, this one caused a lot of people, you know, a lot of discussion. I mean, like uh, just recently I did a, a Midsummer mm -hmm. Explain. And, and honestly, I 
Is that the one? I think I wasn't even going to do an explanation video of right. it. And just as I was talking about it, I, I decided, no, you know what? I am. I'll, I'll do it. And it, that one blew up, too. Yeah. And that was, I mean, I, I still, I look at that and I go, <laughs> that, that's ridiculous <laughs> that, that that many people watched uh, it. I think it's awesome. And I'm, I'm flattered by yeah. that. But it was, it was, it blows me away every single time, you know? So if I have, you know, if I have 50 people look at something, it's like, well, hey, that that's kind of cool. <laughs> and I try not to base it off of, oh, gosh, you know, Hold the Dark had over 50,000. Yeah, yeah. It's terrible. Well, no, you know what? No, it's 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 completely arbitrary. It is what it is. And, you know, that, that would resonate with a lot of people. OK, awesome. <laughs> uh, if I find something else that I can do that again with, yay. And if I can't, well, OK, I'm just going to. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Keep going. And, you know, the funny thing about videos like that, doing top 10 videos, stuff like that, people enjoy that stuff because, you know, if I go see a movie, I'm like, what the heck was this movie even about? You know, it gives you a chance to have someone actually explain it to you and kind of give you an idea. Because Midsummer, if you go into that movie just kind of watching it, there's a lot of stuff you miss and there's a lot of stuff you just kind of don't understand. You know, I, I watched it and I kind of got it, but, you know, Ari Aster is a very deep and philosophical i don't know if philosophical philosophical is the right word but he's a very deep director that has a lot to say on his plate and if they can find someone that will give him that like, gives me the ability to understand you know it's it's nice you know um like i said i'm not the biggest on top 10 videos i'll do them every once in a while but i know those get a lot of views and stuff like that and i see a lot of people do them but like there's 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 explain videos and stuff like that, but it's nice that you were able to find something that people enjoy and that you could give a little bit of <laughs> advice if you, I mean, it makes any <laughs> sense, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, even though you say your channel small, you still get, you know, like you said, Lion King, you did pretty well for you and for, you know, a video and stuff like that, you know, I'm sure it's still, it's humbling, but still you're appreciative that people actually take the time to watch your stuff, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I go in there and if I see 16 people, hey, 16 people watch my video. I mean, that's cool. So, yeah. um, but the one thing I was going to ask, I actually asked you before, I, mean, I we were going to record this before and then things got mixed up. I had to work and all that stuff. But I, I asked you, like, was there a list of movies, like a top 10 list or something like that, that you really enjoy or that you find your favorite, I guess? Yeah, yeah, I um I have thirty one written down, so I'm only okay. gonna. <laughs> That's I won't go. I won't go through all of those. Yeah, no problem. Because it was it was really hard, you know. Like uh -huh. I like as I as I kept writing them down, um, I, and even tonight as I was looking it over, I'm like, oh, now I really like that movie, but is that one that I watch all the time or that yeah. I would, you know? And and now even looking at this, they're still on here that I'm like, oh, I could quote this movie and. <laughs> I don't have it on my list, so yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I do have. I mean, I, I I'm able to narrow it down, especially the uh, like the, my top several of them that I just absolutely love. That you know, uh, people you may have heard of it, you may not have heard of it, you may like it, you may hate it. It doesn't matter because yeah. it, it resonates. You know, I mean, that's the beauty of it that it's it resonates with me. It made me feel great, or the the way that it was shot, or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. You want me to go with the list? You want me to? Well, no. Like I was gonna say, like. <laughs> Well, the funny thing about it is I have a list of, like, what my favorite movies are and a list of, like, movies I enjoy watching. Because I don't my, – my favorite movie of all time is Schindler's List. But I'm not mm. going to watch Schindler's List every day because it's oh. a really dark, depressing yes. movie. So, yes. you know, I'll put, like, Ghostbusters or Back to the Future on. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's whatever. It's just I, I understand if you put movies on there, if, like, for instance, if you put Ghostbusters on there, that's that's fine. That's still a great movie. You know, you can put whatever yeah. you want. So, yeah, you can read off whatever, whatever movies uh, – you enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, one of them is uh, the way it okay. was. Uh, it's Emilio Estevez uh, written and directed stars, Martin Sheen. And um, it's some indie film. Yeah. And I happened upon it and I, I mean, blew me away. Lo absolutely loved it. Loved the story. It was, it was inspiring. Mm -hmm. um, the way, way back, uh, uh, yes. which has, um, you know, uh, Sam Rockwell, Steve yep. Carell, Tony Collette. Oh my God. Gosh. Yeah, I was actually watching that the other night, believe it or not. That movie is <laughs> so you know good, what, right? Yeah, you know what amazes me about that movie is it's written and directed by Nate Faxon and um, um, uh, Jim Rash. Tim, yeah, Jim Rash. And Jim Rash, of course, is on Community, and then they won an Oscar for The Descendants. 
And when I saw this movie, it was so underrated and so underappreciated. And Sam Rockwell, to me personally, should have gotten an Oscar nomination. And Steve Carell is so good. Everybody's, yeah, I, it's a, such a great movie. It really is. Yeah, it blew me away. When we saw it, I rented it one night. Uh-huh. And um, me and my wife watched it. And then the next morning, we got up and we watched it again. Oh, okay. That's how, I mean, it was like, whoa, that was just I, like I was thinking about it, you know. And then uh, a few years later, we showed it to our kids. And we, same thing, we rented it, we watched it that night. The next mm-hmm. morning, we literally got up and watched it again. And then we, we bought it and bought it, bought copies for the boys also so that they have it when they move out. And because it's just, <laughs> it's one of those is like, oh my gosh, it resonates. It's very quotable. Yep. And just, yeah. Um, I've got The Untouchables. Okay. Every, yes. Great movie. I am, I am a huge Sean Connery fan. Um, and then, well, I didn't realize this at the time when it came out, when I was first falling in love with the movie, but mm. it is written by David Mamet, who is yep. my favorite uh, writer. I mean, right. I love his plays. I love his, the way that he does dialogue mm-hmm. uh, because he's just, it's, it's intelligent, it's snappy, it's witty, and it's, it's how we speak versus yep. how a lot of other scripts are written, you know, that you, where you explain everything. And so I, yeah, I just loved it. Yeah, the um, have you seen the you've seen the verdict? I'm assuming, right? The one with Paul I, Newman. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he wrote that, and then I'm, I'm assuming you've seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Absolutely. Yeah, that's yes. a great movie. So yeah, yeah that, he's a good writer. And, oh, he really is. Yeah, there's so many that I mean, they just they get me, and I mean, gosh, even when he did that TV show, what the um with this with the State Farm guy. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I didn't oh. Even, honestly I didn't even know he had done the TV show. That's how bad I am with TV. Yeah. Yeah, no, it it was it it wasn't awesome TV, but uh, some of the dialogue was really good. I don't know, right? But yeah, as I have uh, the Hunt for Red October on there, good movie. Oh, oh brother, where art thou? Great movie. <laughs> um, and that's also because I love the Odyssey, and so I love how they've. I mean, you know, just the whole cast of that, and again, very quotable movie. Yes, yep. but I think that's where a lot of mine come in is that if it if it is quotable or how you know how it makes you feel or whatever. But uh-huh. um, one is a uh, Rope by Alfred Hitchcock. I haven't my, seen that movie. I've seen that movie. In, it's been a while, but yeah, it's a great movie. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think that's my that and Psycho. I mean, mm-hmm. he has a great he has a great catalog. Come on, you know. We, yeah. uh, but but I think for me, Rope is my favorite of his films. Right. Yeah, so, it's a it's a good movie. I uh, I'm a big Strangers on a Train fan, but yeah, Rope is definitely so up good. there. Yeah, Strangers <laughs> on a Train, so good. Um, <laughs> have you seen um, Lifeboat? You know what? That's one of the few. That's his one of his earlier movies, isn't it? it yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of the, I I think I think Psycho, maybe some maybe Stranger on the Train came out before Psycho. I can't remember, but Psycho is like almost like the starting point. Lifeboat is unfortunately one of the movies I haven't seen. I heard it's really good, but I just haven't it, seen it. It is. I mean, because it's a cl- it's a set piece. You know, yeah. it's like a play almost. Right. Um, and you know, he does a cameo in every um in every movie he's in. Yeah. Well. It's very unique the way that he does lifeboat. I'll just leave it at that. And, <laughs> you know, if you ever check it out, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. So, um, the Dark Knight. I mean, gosh, okay. I just watched that the other day just because. Yeah, it's a great we movie. Talk- yeah, just iconic. You know, yeah. um, and the soundtrack too, and the the ending still, as uh, what's his name, Gary Oldman is doing the the final monologue. Yeah. It just gives me shivers every single time. That that opening with how little music there is and the sound work, you know, when they bust out the windows, yes. like it still gives me goosebumps every time. That whole bank sequence is perfect. It's as good so as it gets. Good. Yeah. Right. Isn't it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yes. So good. Yes. Um, uh, I have Lord of the Rings and for me, I, the, the return of the King or excuse me, return of the King is my favorite out of the three. And it's because at the end, and it literally makes me cry every single time. Mm. When um, Aragorn is, uh, he's been crowned and he's walking back and everybody is kneeling and um, the hobbits start to kneel down. He says, my friends, you bow to no man. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah. Oh, every so good. time. Yeah. yeah. That movie's awesome. A lot of people don't like those, like those endings, but it's like to close all those characters up and to end their stories, you have to do it that way or they're yeah. not, people are going to be mad that. Aragorn doesn't get their closure. The Hobbits don't get their closure. It just, it's such a beautiful way to end a series that was just remarkable for its achievement. So, yeah, it's Absolutely. so good. Yeah. Um, I also love the Two Towers, too. That's one of yeah. my that's one of my top scenes. You know, some epic battle scenes on that oh, one, too. Shit. No joke on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, probably rounding out, and this is where it's hard, like number 10. What do I put in number 10? Because I have, <laughs> I have so many ones that I just, that I love. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at my, you know what, honestly, I don't, I would, <laughs> Yeah, yeah I don't it's know. hard. It, Trust it, me. What well, is? It's like I mean, do because it feels final. You know what I yeah. mean? Like so, if I say, "Well, and my number ten one is," then I can't <laughs> put anything else in there. And it's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'll say Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz. Put that in there. Yeah. I mean, I love That's the Cornetto one. trilogy. It's you know, they, especially. I mean, Shaun of the Dead. The the social commentary that yeah. Ed Wright does is so spectacular in that. Right. But um, but with Hot Fuzz, I mean, first off, it's totally quotable. And yep. that one and World's End, both of them, they got funnier and funnier every time I watched them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, um, Hot Fuzz is one I haven't seen as many times as, like, Shaun of the Dead. Um, Hot Fuzz, just, it's an amazing police action movie, and it has Timothy Dalton as the bad guy, and that's <laughs> all you need is Timothy Dalton as a, Timothy Dalton's an amazing actor to begin with. Yes. Especially when, like, when he's in the Toy Story movies, but... Yeah, just just him as a bad. It's it's such a beautiful thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, that's a it's a great list. Um, there's some really good movies in there. There's a lot of you know movies that are really famous for what you said. They're quotable. They have a lot of great tense moments. They have a lot, just a lot of great energy to it. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the movies that kind of crept into my top ten outside of like Lawrence of Arabia is The Truman Show. Oh yeah, how yeah how timely it is and stuff like that. So, you know, it doesn't in the in the end your list is going to be different than someone else's. But the fact that you can put like Dark Knight, you can put Lord of the Rings in there, and you can also put The Way Way Back, it just shows you that it doesn't matter the genre, it doesn't matter what you watch. If you enjoy it, that's all that matters. You know, Absolutely. I like like you said, you mentioned One Crazy Summer. I can't believe more people haven't seen that movie, but that's a movie that's so goofy and so weird. It has a great Bobcat uh, Goldwaith performance. <laughs> yeah, if you yes, can see yes, me on that, video, that knows that. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> if, but yeah, that movie is amazing. But yeah, and you know, it's just an, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing to. I know people like you know top ten list are kind of evolving because I've had movies like Fight Club and South Park and stuff like that in there. But like I said, you know, your list always evolves. So your top ten list you read now could change, you know, <laughs> based on whatever. So, yep. Um, but the one thing I'm gonna do before we end, because we're getting long, <laughs> um, who, if if you have a couple of YouTubers that you kind of really follow, that you really enjoy, that were kind of like inspirations. For instance, like I said, Chris Stuckman is somebody I really enjoyed. Um, <clears throat> Jeremy Johns was somebody I really enjoyed from the beginning. There's some things, you know, I won't get into, but is there anybody that you really, really enjoy watching that you could like recommend or outside of your channel? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I, so yeah, uh, Chris Stuckman and Jeremy Johns, I, mm. I enjoy watching them and they have totally different styles, yeah. um, which I think I like. Um, somebody that I also chat with like you is, uh, Tyler Calvert who does okay. uh, movie reviews and I, you know, I have a lot of fun talking with him and we, we don't always see eye to eye on things, but at mm. least it's, you know, it, I, I love getting the different perspective. Um, some, I, there's two channels that I watch that have nothing to do with movies um, right. that I just, I absolutely love. And one is Peter McKinnon because okay. um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think he's a little nuts and I love <laughs> watching what he does and I love his, um, he does tutorials sometimes. And so I've learned some yeah. things from him, but also I think the way that he, he talks to people and there have been times where it's just like, you know what? You needed to hear this and yeah. awesome that way. And the same goes for Sean Cannell with, um, I think it's think media is, is one of his channels okay. that he does. And same thing. Um, he, his is more inspirational type of, um, you know, just get out and do that. Or what do you, you know, or he'll review products or something like that. But I, I love the fact that both of them are, you know what? We all start from someplace. We all start yep. from terrible and, and that's okay because if we, if we were never terrible, we could never be great and just do it. And, yep. um, I think Peter's is, um, what is it done is better than perfect. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. And, and Sean Cannell is even like, you know, just do it, just start, start today, start doing it. And so both of them, yeah, lots, lots of fun to watch. Um, and there, there's definitely, uh, some other ones that I've been exposed to that I just, I find myself like, Oh, that's. You know, it's entertaining mm-hmm. because it has nothing to do with movies. And yeah. I like to see how, how other people do their channel, how they edit, how they um, 
how they talk to the camera, you know, and sometimes it's it's awesome in their whole production value. Sometimes it's terrible in their production yeah. value and it doesn't change the content. It's just, mm. you know, and so I, I like that too. And I like being able to see people that, you know what, they, they started from some, from nowhere and boom, you know, they, they either made it or they're making it and yep. yeah. Yeah. That's how, that's how life works. You know, um, when you, especially just doing this, you know, or writing or doing a job in general, you know, that's how you gain that experience is by doing it. If you don't do it, if you don't jump into the ocean, you know, head first, you're never going to learn anything. So exactly. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so that'll do it. Um, thank you so much, Chris, for coming on. Um, I really appreciate it. You know, like I said, it's a free form type of podcast. I, the one thing I've always enjoy is i listen to a lot of podcasts or free form mm -hmm. so you can kind of jump in and just go where it takes you i like that i don't like when people just go straight into questions <laughs> or whatever but um yeah so with that uh chris um with your channel with what you do where can people find you uh i'm on youtube movies and munchies um look for a dude with spiky gray hair and always wearing a <laughs> flannel with some there colorful you. books behind that's <laughs> that's how you know it's me <laughs> awesome um yeah uh as always uh if you want to reach movie emporium just like i said like he said chris said uh look on youtube i have twitter big shadow 1138 movie emporium all that good stuff but with that uh chris thank you so much uh for taking your time out of your day to come join me on this uh interview and uh we'll see you guys later peace out what's up guys thank you so much for checking out movie emporium i really appreciate it if you want to go ahead and hit the subscribe button hit the notification button and the bell at the top find out what's coming next for movie emporium also check out these two videos they're amazing i think they're awesome i think you'll enjoy them too but otherwise thank you so much for watching guys we'll see you next time